Well, good afternoon, friends, and uh, a very warm welcome to uh, all of us who are, are joining here uh, in person uh, to worship God together, and uh, also to those who uh, are perhaps watching on a live stream now or will be watching this later, uh, the recording of it. Uh, I don't know about you, this is always one of my, uh, my favourite services uh, of the four o'clock ones that we have, because... We, we get to, to sing praises to God, but hear one another's testimonies uh, as well uh, and, and get a sense of why uh, particular hymns are so precious and, and, and learn of each other's stories as well. So it's, it's such a privilege to do that. We're going to be getting just a moment, but I'd like to invite Dawn, who's one of our deacons, to give just a, a brief announcement. Thanks, Dawn. <coughs> Afternoon. Lovely to see you all here this afternoon. Um, obviously with the building works, um, it's been a bit tricky with the rooms. Um, I help to run our Stepping Stones Cafe, which is on a Wednesday, the second Wednesday of every month in the morning. Um, so it is on Wednesday. The builders are going to work around us, <laughs> which is brilliant. So the Stepping Stones Cafe, if you just want to come and have a chat, um, uh, there's some lovely helpers we have who will sit and chat with you. Um, if you just want to get out for a few hours or even an hour or half an hour, it's between 10 and 12 and it will be in the coffee lounge. So that's on, did I say Tuesday? Wednesday morning. So it's Wednesday morning from 10 to 12. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, John. Perhaps I could just begin our service with uh, a reading from uh, Scripture, and then I'll invite Pat to speak about the first uh, of our, our hymns. And uh, I haven't picked my favourite song uh, today. Uh, I think I have done that in other years, but uh, I'd like to read uh, what I think might be my favourite psalm uh, as we uh, approach God. And this is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. And then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. And those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Beautiful. Uh, and I read it just because it speaks of how God doesn't just uh, invite us to sing songs of praise to him. He puts songs of joy in the hearts of those who once mourned. He puts songs of gladness in the hearts uh, of those who were once uh, in that place of, of wanting and need. So we're going to worship God uh, in just a moment, but first of all, I'd like to invite Pat, uh, who's going to come and share with us her reflections on the hymn she's chosen today. Thank you, Pat. Thanks. All creatures of our God and King. When we say, when we sing that, do we think? just of people, or do we think of all God's creation? I like to think that absolutely everything gives him praise. I was looking at some begonias in the garden just earlier today, and I commented to John, just look at the perfection of those flowers. It just looked as though they were, they've got their heads lifted up, and they were kind of rejoicing in their own beauty. And I like to think, well, of all the creatures, of everything within creation, raising its head, lifting its voice, and saying, praise God. Wonderful. Friends, shall we worship God together? Before we do, the other thing that I wanted to say was we realise it is extremely hot uh, this afternoon. So I'll invite you in a moment to stand if you feel able, but I, I just want to 
strongly uh, encourage you as well, just feel liberated. Uh, don't stand for every hymn if you don't feel uh, able to. And I may invite us actually to remain seated uh, for a couple of these as well. And there are glasses of water as well on the window edges if you, if you do feel the need for a drink. And again, don't be, don't be embarrassed. Please uh, make sure you keep yourselves <coughs> hydrated. So shall we worship our great God together? Stand if we feel able, all creatures of our God and King. Please be seated and we'll pray. Our loving God, as we come this afternoon, uh, we come, we agree together with hearts that are full of thankfulness. And we come because it is a delight to sing these hymns. A delight not because the music is wonderful, not because the words are so evocatively and eloquently written in many cases. That much is true. But we come because it's a delight to sing of you and to sing of your greatness 
and to sing of your love, to sing a song like all creatures of our God and King, and to have that sense of joining with the church universal, the church worldwide, of whom we are just but a small expression, to think of how, as the sun has risen earlier today and in the east and will set later in the west, we join uh, after some saints have first sung songs and before others will sing as the day closes. It is a privilege. And we thank you on days like today as well for uh, songwriters, uh, for musicians, uh, for poets, for wordsmiths, for people who we read what they write and they think, and, and we just have that sense of them, that their words and their music giving expression to what you put uh, on our, our hearts. Uh, long may you continue to inspire new songs to be written, new words to give expression, because uh, there is no limit to what we could say of your love and your goodness. So be here, we pray, and as we sing, may we not just give expression to our worship, but may this also be a means of prayers going out to you. May you comfort us. For those of us who come uh, needing uh, strength, uh, needing a sense of your presence as we walk through difficult times, longing for your healing, uh, longing for your hope to be made new. Come near to us, we pray. We are aware as well uh, that as we come, we cannot come uh, forgetful of the suffering and the needs uh, of uh, our world. And so we do want to take a moment to pray today for the people of Morocco. Uh, we just weep, we lament, uh, we cry with those who cry as we see the terrible scenes of devastation. Uh, we cannot imagine what people are going through and where there is yet hope, uh, where there is life, but now uh, a race against the clock. May people be uh, pull free uh, from uh, the rubble that they find themselves in. And may you quicken uh, and give your blessing to those who are seeking uh, to rescue, to help, to give shelter. Uh, in your name we pray, confident that you hear our prayers. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Friends, in a moment we'll worship God again, uh, but before that I'd like to invite Gillian, who's going to come and say something about uh, the song she's chosen. Thanks. When I was asked to, if I would like to choose a hymn, I thought, well, is it a hymn? Is it a song? Um, I wasn't quite sure at the time. But I've chosen Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Um, and I looked up about this, and apparently it's just known as a contemporary hymn. Um, also, I looked up to see who wrote the hymn. Um, it was uh, written by um, David Evans, J. Evans, in 1986. Um, he, wrote, he actually took only one hour to write this song, which was quite amazing, I think. Um, I think also he, it's probably the best song that he's, or most popular song that he's written. Um, and I know it's been voted on the BBC, Songs of Praise, as quite a popular song. So he must be very pleased. Um, he took his inspiration um, for this from the Old Testament in Genesis, where Jacob wrote, awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And then in Exodus, um, when Moses was on the mountain um, with the burning bush that was not consumed by fire. In 1989, when I was baptized here, um, so, you know, it was only three years old, this um, contemporary hymn, and I hadn't really heard it. Um, and as I came up out of the water, this um, hymn was sung um, and I remember sitting and feeling a great sense of peace um, and warmth as we sung this song. I remember very well, um, you know, the, feeling, the feeling comes every time this music starts and we sing this song. It just brings back those wonderful memories for me. Um, they're really um, wonderful, reassuring words, um, especially, I think, in faith received from him, which is, I think, something we can all, we all do. I really enjoy singing this song, 
Um, it's, pa it's a powerful song or hymn. Um, and I really hope you all enjoy singing it as well. Let's be still for the presence of the Lord. Well, can I invite us to stand uh, if we feel able and uh, let's sing together. Please take your seats, friends. And uh, I'd like to invite Ellen now, who's going to come and uh, speak to us about this song uh, or him she's chosen. Uh, she isn't here, Ellen, sorry. Uh, well, uh, I realize it's, it's the, the weather is, is quite unforgiving uh, today, uh, and I realize not everyone uh, else has been able to join us uh, also who's, who's picked songs. But let's sing this anyway. And um, can I suggest also that we, we, we stay seated, uh, all of us, as, as we sing, uh, Blessed are the pure in heart. Thanks.
like to bring now the first of uh, two readings which Don uh, will reflect on uh, later in our service. Uh, and these words are from Psalm 133, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, which you will find uh, in your order of service. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, I'd like to invite Sylvia, uh, who's going to come now and uh, tell us about the, the hymn that she's chosen for us. Thank you, Sylvia. It's Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, which we all love to hear. Um, this hymn, we're not having all the verses today, but it tells the whole story of Jesus. The scenes by the wayside, and um, the tales of the sea, and also um, when they waved the palm branches when he came into Jerusalem. And um, also, um, in that garden, I've been to the Garden of Gethsemane, and that's where Jesus was. And he says he had tears, tears of sweat coming from him. It was an agony time for him, but he knew that the Lord wanted him, the Lord God wanted him to go to the cross, and he did in the end. And um, then, um, in that garden, after the crucifixion, Mary was there on the first day of the week, and um, she was amazed to find the stone away, and Jesus not there, and she was in great stress, and um, she found what she thought the gardener, and asked him, have they taken him away? And um, he turned to her and he said, Mary, it was Jesus in that garden that she met, and that was wonderful. He, he was alive again, and um, it's great. And um, then his, his promise that he's coming back one day for all of us, it's lovely. All those that believe in him and trust in him. Okay. Glory to Jesus. since I was a child. It means a lot to me. Although we're not having the verses today, perhaps when you find the hymn, you could read all the verses. Um, yeah, thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, we, we carry these songs, don't we? We, we carry them within us uh, over so many years. It's a delight to sing them together. Well, can I invite us to stand uh, if we're able and we'll sing together. Tell me the stories of Jesus.
Please take your seats, and uh, I'd like to invite Don, who's going to come now and share a reflection with us. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Do my best not to trip over all those wires. Well, it's great to be here to praise God, and uh, of course, what do we do but we use music to praise God, whether we're playing instruments, or whether we're singing, or whether it's just in our hearts. We're praising God, making music to Him. And uh, when I was thinking about this afternoon's service, I thought, well, it's a songs of praise, okay? songs, music. And the psalm that came to my mind in particular was that one from Psalm 133, uh, which you'll have in your orders of service. And how pleasant, sorry, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Now, you might have just had a little twinge there uh, if you're used to using other versions, uh, where, of course, it says... Uh, live together in unity. But that word can be translated either way. And uh, I think, you know, uh, David, of course, who wrote this psalm, knew what he was doing. He knew, knew what he was talking about. And it's described, if we look at our Bibles, we see it's described as a song of ascent. A song of ascent. Uh, and what that means, basically, is it was one of the short little songs that the pilgrims used to sing as they made their way up to Jerusalem for one, one or other of 
the, the Jewish festivals. And uh, most of the travellers on those journeys would be related in one way or another to, uh, to each other traveller on the journey. So it's, it's not surprising that uh, David refers to that, that bond, that relationship they have as brothers. Now I think if David was writing it again today, we'd probably have brothers and sisters. So uh, either way, we're inclusive. Brothers and sisters. Now, I don't know about you, what your backgrounds are. I've heard some of your stories over the years. Uh, but when I was a teenager, I attended a number of Christian camps for young people, and also some big Christian uh, events. And very often, uh, we'd hire a coach or a bus or something to get there. And as we went along the road, someone would start singing, and everyone would join in. Uh, it was great fun to do. Uh, normally it was uh, quite one of the short ones, short choruses. Uh, depending on uh, where you were brought up, it might have been the CSSM choruses or the Elim choruses or whatever other chorus book you might have found these short little songs in. Wonderful things like, I will make you fishers of men and that sort of thing. <laughs> yes. and. Uh, uh, and then there was the chorus medley, I seem to remember. that You go about across three different choruses. Great fun to do. And I'm sure that these pilgrims, as they went up to Jerusalem, were having fun as they sang. It, it, there was joy in their hearts, you know. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Yeah, that's what they were doing. It was a song of ascent. And of course, sometimes on these gatherings, you'd find those who were more musically inclined might put a harmony to some of these uh, uh, songs that we were singing. You know, that's why I love playing with my daughter Alison here, because uh, uh, she's a much better musician than I am, and she is able to harmonize with her flute over the top of what anyone else is doing. And it, it, it just thrills my heart to hear that and to be able to play with her. But I'm sure people did this when they were singing as well. I mean, David himself was a musician. He played the harp as well as sang. So he knew what he was talking about here. And uh, too often, I think, these little short psalms of ascent, the songs of ascent, we just put on one side and uh, perhaps forget about them. But really, there was some real truth in them. Now, when we read through the book of Psalms, we, we open our Bibles, and particularly if it's uh, perhaps a study Bible or an older version, we might see that at the beginning of a Psalm, there are some words which we don't normally say. And what they are, they're instructions. Uh, instructions, and uh, perhaps something that uh, might start off to the director of music. Yeah? And... Uh, these are things that are put in to show how the people could sing or what the musicians should play. Sometimes it even notes a tune that they were to sing it to. Uh, and that's great. And uh, I, I remember um, uh, being at some events years ago. Uh, we, we shared a conference centre uh, with the Salvation Army. And uh, it was the... the annual retreat for Salvation Army social workers. And they always used to have one night that they invited us into where we would uh, all have a big sing-along together. And there, and there someone would stand up and they'd say, they'd say the first line of the song or hymn and they would give the name of the tune. And everyone knew what it was and off you would go. Absolutely tremendous. I used to love that. Now, when a piece of music is written, um, you find that there's something on there that you may not understand. And I like to think of them in lay people's terms as squiggles. Squiggles. And um, that's why I thought squiggles this afternoon 
When we think about God and harmony, the squiggles, and uh, sometimes you see um, a funny sign at the beginning of a line. And uh, I'm not sure if we can, are we seeing some funny symbols? We are. That's good. Yes, I'm sure some of you will know what these are. Um, but to others, you know, it, it might just as well be Greek or some other foreign language. But uh, they're there, they're squiggles, and they have a meaning because they're telling the musicians and or singers um, what they should sing and how that note, when they eventually see the note on those lines, uh, just where you pitch it, how it is. So they're meaningful squiggles. They mean something. But then, of course, it, it gets a bit more complicated and you get another set of symbols alongside those. And, and they come up and uh, they uh, give you sort of an extra little tweak to the notes. And then it goes one other step further and you get some numbers up there as well. And of course, if you're just out in the congregation, you haven't got a clue that all this is going on. Uh, but of course, the musicians uh, and singers, they have to know this, so they make sure they can lead us in uh, the way we should be singing or playing. And if the uh, musicians or singers ignore those squiggles and do their own thing, then they're gonna, going to end up, instead of harmony, there's going to be disharmony or discord. So these squiggles are very important. Now you might think when uh, we look at these very short psalms and some, many of them written by David, that he's stating the obvious here. Why does he bother say it? Of course it's nice when people dwell together in unity or harmony. Of course we want that, don't we? But I think David was very much a realist. And as we read through his psalms, we see uh, that he sometimes just pours it out, pours his heart out, tells it to God and to anyone else who's listening just how it is for him. So he knows how it is, and he knows that these people going up from different tribes, they would have had disagreements. There were even disagreements in the families. We only have to look back at some of those family stories in the Old Testament to see who uh, was having disagreements. And we even see it as we come through the New Testament that there are disagreements not only within ordinary families. I mean, you know, uh, when, when Jesus came uh, to Mary and Martha, um, God, did she, Mary have a disagreement with Martha? Because Martha was uh, uh, wanting to sit and listen to Jesus, and Mary had to get on making the meal. And she had this disagreement. She, she spoke her mind to Jesus. So there are disagreements, and uh, things aren't always unity or harmony. So David would have been a well, well aware of this, and well aware of this when he's writing the squiggles uh, of his psalms. Of course, if we sing in unison, and uh, I think probably most of us this afternoon may have been singing in unison, we're singing the same words to the same music. I think we might say uh, in common terms, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Yeah? The same tune all the way through, we're not harmonizing uh, or anything like that. No variations. But then some people might enjoy singing like that, and why not? Um, sometimes you sing these great hymns, and, and sometimes, uh, of course, you, you get these harmony bits written into the music, where uh, this bit is for the ladies and this bit is for the men. Think like that wonderful hymn, And Can It Be? And you get to the last couple of lines and the men and the women diverge 
and uh, echo through, and, and, and it's great. Or you might be hearing that uh, uh, great uh, uh, Welsh hymn uh, sung to the tune of Cumronda, um, Bread of Heaven, Bread of Heaven, feed me now and evermore. And, and you get the tenors going up, echoing over the top of it, harmonizing. Brilliant stuff. And uh, that's the harmony. So that we get some people will sing all on the one tune. Other people like to harmonize. And uh, neither of them are wrong. They can both be right. Because when, when a composer uh, puts the notes on, on the sheet, when he writes on those lines, those little uh, dots with stems on them, uh, he knows what he's doing. He's no, he knows whether it's going to be all in unison or sometimes diverge into harmony so that they produce a, a fuller, richer sound. And to many people, that's more pleasing on the ear. But of course, I remember uh, many years ago uh, a choir master, a certain choir master, uh, listened carefully to his choir and if he caught the sound of a singer uh, singing a discordant note where they shouldn't have been singing a discordant note uh, he would refer very very disrespectfully to the mrs jones in the choir now of course it wasn't necessarily a mrs jones but uh, he always used to say that uh, the discordant notes were sung by the Mrs. Jones in the choir. <clears throat> but let's go back to our Psalm 133 this afternoon. Right from the start of it, it points us to the creator of life, the Lord himself, because unity and harmony come from him. That's why we had that other few verses from 1 Corinthians, because Paul picks up on this with the body working in harmony. You know, and, and we all get to that certain age where our body doesn't like to work in harmony, and uh, we get all sorts of problems, and uh, we have to get it sorted. But the ultimate harmony and unity comes from heaven from the father himself who has that unity father son and holy spirit in heaven itself the three in one yes they have different functions different functions a heavenly father the creator if you like the ultimate composer and uh, he is there he puts the notes on the pages of life for us showing us how we could get the best of our, out of our life to make that great tune that he wants for us. He puts the notes there. He puts the squiggies, squiggles, the nuances, if you like. And where do we find them? We find them in the scriptures, don't we? And if we want to learn how to live our lives according to God's great song, uh, then we have to know what the notes are. And we need to get into the scriptures. And one day, we'll be singing a new song in heaven. Yeah? A new song. And reminds me of uh, uh, another old song, isn't there? There's a new song written down in glory. And it's mine. Yes, it's mine. Um, great stuff. But of course, there's Jesus. He comes into that equation too. Within that unity, he has that other function. Because through his life and his witness, when he brought the gospel here on earth, he shows us where we go wrong. What's wrong with our lives? And he gives us those directions as to how to get back onto the right notes of the proper tune. To get back in harmony with what the Father wants for us. He redeems us. And we mustn't leave out the Holy Spirit, must we? The power of, of God which comes down from heaven to give us his power 
which will enable us to live our lives in unity and harmony. And we get those, what you might think are odd verses, 2 and 3 of Psalm 133, where it talks about oil uh, anointed on Aaron's head and flowing down onto his robes. You might think, what a mess. And then he smartens it up a bit and talks about the dew coming down on the mountain top and then flowing down. And what is it? It's showing us that God's blessings come down. They come down upon us. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live in unity and harmony. The precious oil flows down. The dew flows down. Just as the precious power of God flows down into our lives. So there may only be three verses in this psalm. And we might have just thought of them as a, a pleasant little ditty in the past. But really, it's a challenge to us. It's a challenge as to how we live our lives. Both in our human families and in our church family. Because as individuals, we also form part of God's great family. And there, in his word, God gives us the tune that we need to live those lives. Our personal family, our church family, to live in harmony and in unity, according to the tune that God wants for us. So may we take up the challenge. It's not always easy to live harmoniously and unity, but we can do it. If we trust in God and make sure we know what his plan, what the tune he wants us to sing to, to dance to, to live our lives to, because it's there in scripture for us. So let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, it's in humility we come before you. We seek unity and harmony within our own lives, our families, and your church. Holy Spirit, breathe power into our hearts so that we may grow closer to one another and to you. Open our eyes, Lord, to see the beauty in our differences. Unite us as one so that we may spread your love and light throughout the world. Fill our hearts with compassion so that we may be kind to one another. Strengthen our bonds that we may grow in faith and understanding. Help us, Lord, to forgive one another for any wrong we may have committed. Grant us the wisdom to learn from our mistakes and the courage to seek reconciliation. Holy Spirit, heal any divisions and restore harmony among us. Empower us to work together in love and service. Inspire us to be selfless, placing the needs of others before our own. Enable us to be vessels of your love, bringing hope and joy to all we encounter. And we ask that in your mercy, you would hear our prayer and make us one, just as you are one, with the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Don, thank you so much. Uh, very helpful uh, and uh, enriching, uh, adding to our understanding really significantly of, of what we're doing. Thank you, Don, this afternoon.
Uh, I'd like to invite Mary, and she's going to come and say something about uh, the next song that we're going to sing. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that probably most of you have been aware that I have been very, very ill. But I am happily in remission at the moment, so my hair is beginning to grow back. You'll be here. And I am so grateful for... I was always in a sort of... Uh, a big hug, but I was going to say, of prayer and concern over the last year. All I can say is thank you so much. And I hope this state of affairs lasts for a good long time. Anyway, it's a copy in my head. Um, <laughs> when I, uh, some time ago, I did a little bit of research into it, and I discovered, this isn't the reason it's my favourite, I hasten to remember, but it comes from about the 14th, 15th century, and, and the words are attributed to a certain St. Osmond of Salisbury. You know, which is a bit weird, but... Uh, but the real, the real reason is that um, I had several adopted aunts. I think most people of my, ge my generation would have had adopted aunts and uncles, friends of your parents. And one of them, uh, probably my favourite, uh, she was a Christian where my mother was not, which is sad. And she used to send me beautiful illustrated books of Bible stories. I even got a sticker book, which was great fun. But one of the books was a book of prayers, beautifully illustrated. I loved that book so much, it fell apart. Anyway, one, one, of, these prayer, one of the prayers in it was, God be in my head. And me being me was sort of going through the, making up tunes to go to the prayers that were written, because that's the sort of thing I did. And my mother suddenly said to me, she said, do you know there's a proper tune to that one? I said, oh really? And she sat down and she taught me it. And so all I can say, it is so special because it's very reminiscent of a very special time I had with my mother. And that's all I'm going to say. Apart from the fact it is a fantastic prayer, but uh, we can't discount that, can we? It's sort of uh, reminding us we should place God where he should be in every aspect of our life. Okay. Thank you, Mary, and it is, it is so wonderful that you're back with us and, and able uh, to share with us, so wonderful. Can, can we stand if we're able, friends, and uh, we'll sing this together. going to sing again now uh, a final song as our service comes uh, to a close uh, and this chosen by another one of our, our, our dear friends who's recently gone uh, to be with the Lord, a, a hymn much loved by Bill uh, who was so loved by, by us and who will have sung this on countless occasions to the God he loved but here in, here in the church he loved. Uh, so we remember Bill with gladness uh, as we declare uh, God's greatness. Let's, let's stand uh, if we're able. Almost impossible in some ways uh, to sing this without uh, raising to our, our, our feet if we're able to. How great thou art. Thank you.
Isn't it wonderful to sing these songs? Friends, thank you for joining us, and thank you to everyone who's worked so hard, to Don, uh, who's pulled this service together and shared it with us, to our musicians uh, and our tech team. And we give thanks as well uh, for the love and care of those who've prepared the food uh, that we're going to, to eat now. Uh, a blessing, friends, uh, as we go off to have our refreshments. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, uh, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. And may he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen.